Polly, you're interested in pop culture and how media is made, right? Yep. We should totally do a Brain Stuff episode that's specifically about how entertainment works. Right. Let's do one about that movie, Lucy. Have you seen it yet? I haven't, but you're talking about the uh, Luc Besson film starring Scarlett Johansson where she's like a drug mule and she gets superpowers because the drugs in her stomach leak and they let her use more than 10% of her brain, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like the female version of that Limitless movie with Bradley <laughs> Cooper. Ignoring the whole brain 10% thing, that's a whole nother episode for a different time. It looks pretty cool, right? She's really a pretty good action star usually, our Scar jo. So maybe if this one works out, we will finally get that standalone Black Widow movie that's been rumored. Well, not so fast there, Holly. You know about the whole exclusion myth in Hollywood, right? That action movies with female leads don't sell well, which is why so few of them are made? Yeah, but women account for half of all movie ticket purchases, so doesn't the film industry want to make money? Let's take a minute and look at the claims that female-led action movies don't sell, and then a couple studies that analyze those numbers to see if it's actually true or not. Well, I have read that screenwriters are actually coached not to write female characters that have complex roles. How about Joss Whedon? You like the movies he makes, right? I super do. He tried to get a Wonder Woman movie made, but it didn't work out. And in 2013, he said it was because executives used bad movies with superheroines that already failed as justification, especially if they don't sell enough toy merchandise. Okay, an economic argument like that I can buy into, especially when you consider Hollywood's current emphasis on the international market. Before they even start making a movie, producers are selling distribution rights to international buyers. And those producers are really vocal in saying, that they have a better chance to sell those rights if the movies are led by popular male actors that already are known around the world. Yeah, like a guy like me. No. That's why it wasn't that big of a surprise when it was reported in 2007 that then Warner Brothers chairman Jeff Robinoff decided his studio would no longer make movies with female leads. But Robinoff denied that he ever said such a thing. And he's not even with Warner Brothers anymore, Christian, so you can't use that as your example. And what about the success of female-led films that already happens all the time? Have you seen Kill Bill? And hello, what about the entire Aliens franchise featuring Sigourney Weaver? Yes, but some industry insiders will claim that those movies were flukes, and they'll often attribute the success to the big name directors like Quentin Tarantino or James Cameron. Okay, fine, you're gonna make me go to the nuclear option of evidence here. The Hunger Games, led by a woman, made buckets of money. The first one made $408 million, and Catching Fire made $425 million and was the number one movie in 2013. Hunger Games has a lead character that is female, multifaceted, and isn't sexualized. There's a lot of hope that that franchise is gonna change the way that Hollywood thinks about gender. I mean, who knows, maybe that's how Lucy got greenlit. Maybe. But it would explain the popularity of the film Divergent, which has been really big this year. And it's got a similar dystopia girl archetype thing going on that The Hunger Games has. Did you know that that's actually the second most popular movie this year that stars a female lead? Yeah, that's true. But as of this recording, it's only the 10th in box office sales. Okay, Smug Ginger. Why don't you just go ahead and school me with all the statistics about how women-led action films actually perform at the box office. Okay, okay. So after Catching Fire did so well, the New York Film Academy examined the top 500 grossing films produced in the last five years for gender inequality, and they found that only 10% of movies feature an equal number of women on screen to men. They also revealed that only 31% of speaking roles in those films go to women. And check this out, of that subset of speaking roles, a third of them had to take their clothes off at some point. But that doesn't actually address female leads specifically. Another study out of San Diego State University found that in 2013, only 15% of film protagonists were women. That's actually up four points from 2011, Holly. So regardless of why, those movie producers are actually right that female leads don't sell tickets as well as men then. Well, actually, polling website 538 did this interesting analysis that tests that claim. They found that movies featuring multiple female characters who talk about something other than men have significantly higher box office sales. Even though they have lower median budgets than these other films, they actually deliver an average return of $2.68 on every dollar 
Well, then the free market's gonna prevail, right? I mean, if Hollywood wants to make money, that data that you just talked about means we should start seeing more movies featuring these kinds of three-dimensional female characters. We'll see. As we're speaking, the number four movie this year was Maleficent, which I know you have a soft spot for. I hate that film. So what about you, BrainStuff fans? What's your favorite female-led action film? Yeah, and if you could make one, what would it be? Tell us in the YouTube comments. And this episode was a bit of an experiment for us, talking about how entertainment works. Did you like it? Do you want us to tackle more questions like this? Subscribe to the channel and tell us your thoughts.